name is Julie, and I would like to share some tips on the care and feeding of one of our planet's most rare and valuable resources, the mad scientist. First of all, let me clarify, I'm not talking about your standard nerds here, okay? These are highly intelligent, often very imaginative people, right? Um, and they tend to have a distaste for rules or laws that didn't actually come directly from nature. So real life mad scientists tend to do pretty impressive things like invent electricity or LSD. Um, some of them unlock the secrets of the cosmos. Some of them strap themselves to chemical rockets and launch themselves into it. Uh, Enrico Fermi, for instance, had an entire national lab spring up around him just to facilitate his efforts, because that's how important he was. Mr. Mad Scientist. Now, obviously, the kind of people who fall into this category are pretty smart. So, while the vast majority of us fall somewhere in the middle there, um, as you deviate from the norm in either direction, that number drops pretty rapidly. And it's up at the far end of the scale that things really start to get interesting, um, when the number of people with a uh, given IQ isn't even the size of Chicago. In fact, the number of people who would have the same IQ score as Charles Dickens or Galileo is smaller than the population of a town in Wisconsin, a farm town in Wisconsin, the little ones. So my mad scientist has an IQ of 180. That little pie chart is him. Um, finding this guy was like winning the lottery, honestly, with a 7 billion population planet. But remember, winning the lottery has its drawbacks. <clears throat> Now, if, like me, you find this particular combination of personalities attractive, you can win him over with the usual assets. However, if you want to keep him engaged, you're going to need to be ready to discuss the protocol and efficacy of Mythbusters experiments in graphic detail. <sighs> so living with a mad scientist. Living with a mad scientist is a pretty strange experience. This is, this is nothing. Um, you'll need to get used to piles of tools in every corner heavily laden bookshelves where fetal sharks sit next to the complete works of Kurt Vonnegut, and of course, odd-looking biological experiments showing up in drawers and closets out of nowhere. Most of this is pretty harmless, but occasionally you'll find out that he switched the dogs over to an all-aquatic protein vegetable diet, just to see what would happen. Um, or you can't enter a room for an hour because you're not sure if the lightning machine is still on. <clears throat> You may also have to accept that some fish really just like to eat mice. Actually though, feeding your mad scientist isn't necessary. If you keep a well-stocked kitchen, he'll feed you. Or he'll come up with ways to uh, produce food at home. Yeah, so he frequently reminds me that all of our fish, and in a worst case scenario, puggles are in fact edible. But he, uh, he will collect all kinds of amazing things and cook amazing things with, of course, no recipe whatsoever because mad scientists consider that cheating. Or he'll grow an entire, uh, entire group of basil in the hydroponic home garden he created in our office at home in January. Speaking of which, the best way to get your mad scientist out of the house is to get him his own lab. Um, he's going to build this stuff somewhere. You might as well just get him a place to do it. And this way, it's not on your carpet. Um, it's important to keep in mind that the world inside your mad scientist's head is probably quite fascinating, and he's probably not going to want to leave it. However, without proper socialization and friends, he might start designing advanced weapons systems. He gets bored. Like when he built a fireball cannon, because you forgot the rule about not giving him Adderall and beer at the same time. <sighs> so, Also, make sure to try to keep track of his friends. You know, you need to keep a little list on the fridge of names, parents, phone numbers. He can keep anything in his mind except phone numbers, email addresses, names, and faces. So that's, that's your job. Now, my notebooks, personally, have always been chock full of text, writing lyrics, poems, whatever. These are his. Um, he doesn't think in terms of text. He actually prefers to think in terms of math and colorful diagrams. So for instance, if you ask him to explain a concept and he responds, it only makes sense in base 16 math. Just let that one go. However, if you ask him to uh, explain something when he's drunk, such as, how does a nuclear reactor work? Or, what are the difference between these two types of hand grenades? Settle in for a long and interesting explanation, because that shit is fascinating. So in the end, I will be the first one to say that caring for a mad scientist has a bunch of giant pains in the ass involved. But, I wouldn't be advocating for personally nurturing these people if I didn't firmly believe that they were essential to maintaining our quality of life into the future. And 
you know, for all those times when you have to go out and run errands and pick up all kinds of crazy things at the store, or when he's mad for two days because quantum mechanics is nonlinear or whatever. Um, <laughs> sometimes he'll take all that attention and crazy brain power and focus it all on just you, and that makes it all worth it. <laughs>